yeah, and then that would be a fascinating behind the scenes uh yeah featurette to watch. Wow, what a great setup to go into our final topic for today, Ryan, mm-hmm. which is the behind the scenes Obi-Wan Kenobi documentary, Obi-Wan Kenobi A Jedi's Return. I loved it. What did you think, Ryan? I liked it. Um I okay. thought you know, it kind of uh it kind of hit those familiar beats of like the more like fluffy um Star Wars BTS featurettes. Um I think there was like you know, a lot of the, you know, Star Wars is generational and it means so much to people. I never get tired and of hearing that. I, was, I never get tired I of hearing a, that. I love it. I never I, get tired of I it. saw this. I saw A New Hope in the theaters when I was yep. a kid and, you know, like You're all damn right that they stuff. Did. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that's all, that's all well and good and all. Um, but it's like familiar. I think, um, you know, there's some bts prequel stuff in there as well and like a lot of that was like oh yeah i've seen these scenes on like different um featurettes but there are also things that i was like huh i have not seen uh ewan mcgregor in his weird like track everlast coat thing. his everlast coat <laughs> like, i never saw that everlast coat he was he's like a, a motorcycle riding boxer <laughs> like club kid like uh, all at once in that coat and uh him him talking to george and like looking like he has the worst hangover in the world <laughs> like um and uh yeah that was uh that was that was cool but like the stuff where um where he's like you know seeing the lightsabers and stuff like i feel like i've seen that in um something before Um, so it was pretty incredible to see some of that um phantom menace new phantom menace behind the scenes footage and it is i'm almost certain it's footage that would would have been shot for the beginning documentary it seemed very much of that style like the footage looked very similar the same whatever uh and you're right there is footage of him picking out his lightsaber in the beginning um there's footage of early meetings with george you know in the beginning but um, there was definitely new stuff here. And, and, uh, you know, for somebody who's watched the beginning a bunch of times and like really loves that movie mm. and, or that documentary, it's just, and loves the Phantom Menace and loves Star Wars in 1999. Like it was really mm-hmm. exciting for me to see new shots and like, just even like, yeah, just a couple more little 30 seconds of, of, you know, cut footage from the beginning or whatever I thought was great. And uh, I it felt like, the footage of him talking to George Lucas may have been the first time he ever met George. Like, you know, he turns around and sees George and like, it's almost like, Oh, cool. Like there you are, you know, but he kind of plays it cool, but also it's sort of like, well, that's George Lucas. Like that's the impression I got from it. I don't know if that's really true or not, but yeah. or if it wasn't the first time you met him, maybe the first time since signing to do the movie or whatever. In any case, it was, I felt that was a cool moment. And I loved his story too, about like, <laughs> You know, the first time he was on set, walking around, like looking at everything, there was the the uh, underwater speeder. You know that they, he saw like the the model being built, or not even the model, but the actual speeder they were going to sit in for the Otagunga, You know, speeder. We said going to speed you away thing. And yeah. he said to George, like the submarine, he's like, "Oh, will we go underwater in that? Will we go will underwater? Will we be and- submerged?" <laughs> <laughs> I love the way he told the story because he said. He said, George just looked at him like, what? Like, it's not real. It's all fake. You know, this is like Star Wars isn't real. Like, yeah. Oh, man. I loved it. Great. I loved it. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I thought that, that the moments like that were great. Um, and there was just, you know, like all the stuff of, of uh, Hayden coming back, I thought was, was really great. Seeing him on set. Just cool to see them like layering on the, you know, burnt skin you know, Anakin Skywalker mm-hmm. stuff yeah. uh, was really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and I love the way that they, you know, both Ewan and, and Deborah Chow kind of talked about their vision for the show. And um, Deborah mm-hmm. Chow talked about how she wanted to focus less on Obi-Wan Kenobi the Jedi and more on Obi-Wan Kenobi the man and, you know, be more mm-hmm. of a, a character story about, you know, like what's important to him and what traumatized him and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I just, you know, I, I thought it was interesting and, and fun to hear them talk about things that way. Um, you know, you said it was, you felt like it was a little fluffy, like, you know, some of the other um, Disney era 
the documentary shows and stuff. And I mean, there, there's definitely an element to that to it, but I got the impression in the trailer for Obi-Wan Kenobi, a Jedi's return that it would, you know, seeing them looking at the big movie screens with the footage on it and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got the impression it would be a little more like the Skywalker saga documentary from the episode nine Blu-ray. And mm-hmm. I do feel like it's more in that vein than it is in, you know, like some of the other, like the force awakens, the the documentary on the force awakens is so like, feels like it could be like a special for like 2020 on ABC or something, yeah. you know, like it's really, yeah. really like, um, and, and, and this is not like, it's definitely not warts and all. There's no warts anywhere. Like they don't, they don't, yeah. th- there's nothing critical in it, but there it, is. It's though. presented in a more emotional way. I feel like, like even the soundtrack, mm. you know, the score and, <laughs> and, and, and the, it just, it, if you have subtitles me, on or closed captioning, there's multiple parts that kind of cracked me up. Cause I was watching with closed captioning and it's like emotional music plays. Uh huh. Yeah. It's was, true though. What's happening a lot. Yeah. So what's critical in there? You say there is something so, critical in there? Okay, so I think we talked about this when the original trailer came out. I very much dislike the scenes of them standing and like watching the footage on the volume. Um, I think that is just like incredibly corny looking. I love it, and like, I'll argue why in a moment. But go ahead and tell me okay. why you dislike and it. And so, like, I was like, man, I, I, I wish this stuff like wasn't in there. Like, we. Like, I don't know. It just, it seems so corny to me. And uh, alongside the slow motion walking um, monologues, but uh, the the one part that um, was great and I think almost justifies the watching the stuff on the screen is when you had Hayden and Ewan watching together and then they're like, yeah higher ground joke <laughs> yeah yep if i had a nickel for every time yeah ewan it's seemed like, genuinely irritated when he was like if i had a dollar for every time somebody told yeah. me i had the high ground yeah yeah, yeah. and i'm i'm <laughs> i like almost wish that there was like hayden being like yeah don't mention sand like, yeah I, right, 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 right. like yeah. and like just seeing them like so over that uh you know Hopefully that makes people uh, rethink their uh, their clever clever comments in the future. Well, I don't think Hayden. I I never got. I didn't get that vibe from Hayden. I he didn't no. uh, he didn't he didn't give me I'm over it vibes. You know, I he I would assume he is very much over it, but he didn't. Yeah, I don't feel like he's he ever way more he guarded than yeah. He didn't he did not like let the mask drop there to uh, yeah, yeah yeah. But you know that being said, like you and you know you. you you just said he's not as guarded was overwhelmingly positive. Like, I think like most of the stuff he says is very, very positive. So when you do have a moment like that, where he's like, Oh my God, the, uh, the high ground stuff that just makes me believe all the other stuff that much more, you know, cause it's yeah. like, mm-hmm. you know, he, he is willing to whatever. And, and even one of the things he talks about in this documentary is like when, uh, the idea was first floated out to him or, you know, the possibility of playing, Obi-Wan Kenobi, he was like, well, I don't know if I'm, I don't think that's me, you know? And there was news stories about this in the last couple of weeks too. Because yeah. he says I'm, talked about it in other interviews and stuff, but I just don't see myself doing some big budget movie like that. Like, I don't think that's something I want to do. Um, yeah. But then you contrast that with like the footage from the beginning of him saying, you know, getting done with a stunt and being like, they asked me if I want to do Star Wars. And I said, too fucking right. You know, like, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, people are complex as, um, yeah, as Moses Ingram says uh, in in the documentary about Riva, she says mm-hmm. specifically women are complex, and it's cool to be able yes. to kind of explore someone who has these different layers to them. So, yeah, um, I thought two of the highlights I think were talking were Moses talking mm-hmm. for sure, um, and also the stuff um, about Leia, and I like how they acknowledged they're like, yeah, you. People thought this was going to be about Obi Wan and Luke, and we swerved you. <laughs> Ewan like, was gleeful about it. He was like, "Yeah, I the fact that people thought it was going to be, yeah, yeah." And I mean, I also think I think we're all in agreement that this was the better story to tell. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Like, and it it's so funny how like it was right under our nose like the whole time, and like we all expected one thing, and then it became this other thing. Okay, real quick, I just have to defend the footage of the actors standing in front of the big screens. Okay. Um, I think 
I, yes. Is it kind of corny? Yeah, of course. Uh, I, I, yeah, for sure. But I think it was an, an effective way of, you could communicate a lot very quickly by doing that um, instead of having to have, uh, so in other words, like when you had Ewan and Hayden standing in front of that screen and, mm-hmm. you know, they're watching the footage back of themselves, it's like, yes, mm-hmm. you can have the two talking heads or whatever. You can have them say like, you know, we loved our time together and we formed a bond and all that stuff like when we were on mm-hmm. set. Um, and, you know, you might have like one comment to that effect, but 20 seconds of them standing there watching all the all the footage of themselves in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith and stuff, to me, it really kind of like cements that or it's just another way besides the, the, the actors themselves literally saying it of like reinforcing that idea. And I think like the same thing with Ewan McGregor, you know, he's telling the story of when I was younger, you know, I saw Star Wars for the first time and all that. Like, okay, yes, I hear him saying that. But when I hear him saying that, while he's also sort of dwarfed by this giant screen showing footage of a new hope. Um, you know, it's like, it's communicating that idea to me on two different levels and it's sort of, you know, I think it, it's more effective that way and, uh, and, and able to be kind of like, um, you know, kind of cemented that message is cemented a little bit uh, or delivered, I guess a little bit more, um, concretely is not the right word but like more effectively or more assertively because Mm. it's being told it's Ryan, it's being communicated to me visually Mm -hmm. and also Mm -hmm. through dialogue or through, through what the air, what the actors are saying. Um, So I just, I just loved it. I loved it. Yeah. I mean, I would, my counterpoint would just be like, it's redundant rather than more clearly communicated. And I think just the, the effect is cheesy. Like when they go back to like, I feel like especially for like Deborah in particular, when they would like go back to her face, she's like, yep, I'm watching TV. <laughs> like, um, like, I don't know. They're, I bet it was like, her idea. It could have been. <laughs> and, you know, maybe, yeah, I don't know. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> but I will say again, like I'll reiterate, like I thought the part where with, Ewan and Hayden watching it together like that was effective to me because that's just like you and you know this. we made this we made this and and we're looking yeah. at it together and, yeah. yeah and you know it's like you and your friend like watching something together and like commenting on it like that's that that part I liked and that's why I said like that part kind of justified the um the use of it but i wish it would have just been like that section and there's there's other things they could have um you know fill fill that space with um oh and the the other thing la- real last thing is um o'shea jackson o'shea jackson jr o'shea yeah. jackson i'm um, talking about uh star wars and about how it's such a family thing and him saying Everyone in my family loves Star Wars. Makes me think that uh, we may have a Ice Cube. Uh, a member of NWA who's a massive yeah. Star Wars fan. <laughs> there may, yeah, yeah that uh, that clarifies uh, the Star Wars fandom with one one member of NWA. Sure. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, no, yeah, that, that was, I was actually going to bring that up. And, um, <laughs> the fact that he said he would like to have duel of the fates played at his wedding, you know, he <laughs> loves awesome. duel of the fates. So I thought awesome. that was cool. Yeah. I um, wanted and to bring he, that up. I wa- he was that, uh, and he's that prequel generation that they talk exactly. about. Yeah. 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 Uh, Ewan also, I, I love the whole sequence that was highlighting Ewan insisting on being, um, there for Hayden's first scene. You know, um, like the, like Hayden was saying, oh yeah, we've been trying to get you in to go home, but he's like insisting on being there for your, yeah, for your first scene and uh, all that. So I thought that was cool and it was nice to see that from a behind the scenes perspective. I thought that was great. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then finally, uh, I, we would be remiss not to mention the fact that they go to credits and then shortly after, um, you know, have like three, four, five, six minutes of, Star Wars celebration footage. You did watch that, right, Ryan? 
wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Ian, Our, Ian. Okay, so I tweeted. I tweeted. You should follow the Blockade Runner podcast on Twitter dot com. But I tweeted. Never heard of it. Yeah, I tweeted. I was like, okay, make sure you don't turn it off at the credits because if you went to Star Wars Celebration and then Ian, um, res- uh, our friend Ian, you know, responded and was like, oh, uh, are you like, are you in the footage? And I was like, no, but I just know that some people and I wanted to throw shade at you, but I was like, let's not do this. It might get lost in translation. It's mm. on social media. Like, let's not yeah. be that guy. So I chose to take the high road. Uh, I had the high ground there, but mm-hmm. um, I was like... <laughs> You know, I wanted to say, I know some people, like maybe somebody I host a podcast with, turns it off as soon as the credits hit and, you know, might have missed it. So, oh you well, did. you know what? Uh, that was a generalization you made about me that is also correct. <laughs> I do. Like, you know, I always, you know, because didn't I you always... miss the uh, didn't you miss the Boba Fett, the book of Boba Fett thing after I, no, the Mandalorian finale? Oh, that was Kevin. That was okay. Kevin. But okay. I will say that I was when that came on, it wasn't because I was like sitting through the credits. It was because I was like on my phone, like <laughs> texting you all yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah, then I was yeah. like, oh wait, there's something here. Um yeah. but like generally speaking, I do turn things off. Which That's you know, it's like I you know, it's bad, you know, because it's insulting to like people who made the thing but like also to me like just seeing someone's name isn't like acknowledging the work that they did like i would prefer to watch documentaries and behind the scenes footage of like the actual people like talking about this and like read what they say on twitter and you know stuff like that is has more meaning to me than just like sitting like watching credits just feels like arbitrary. Like it's just scrolling names, but like, sure. Yeah. It's not like a disrespect to the creators, which hopefully I've communicated through years of doing this podcast that, uh, you know, I, I do really respect 